happy Tuesday. I hope you're doing beautifully. I feel called to speak today if that's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> I'm gonna be reading a bit from my journal and speaking a bit. There is construction happening in the background and often there are dogs barking, but tis life. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna be speaking on the process of living intuitively and what that means to me within my practice and path. I have broken it down into four steps or four pillars that I have found within my own practice. So I feel called to share and I hope you enjoy and can pull something from it. So to start living intuitively, what that means to me is li listening to my intuition, listening to my body, listening to my guides and allowing them to lead me on my path to my highest self, to my fullest embodiment of self, to my highest joy. I come from a culture and often we are in this Western culture that does not hold space for our desires, does not hold space for our wants, our needs, our passions, and actually encourages, actively encourages us to repress them completely. And so I am on this path of unlearning and deconstructing and decolonizing and then relearning and reconstructing a whole new path for myself that actually holds space and encourages my passions, my desires, my wants, just my fullest embodiment of self, like all that I am. And so with that, I it has been it's been interesting, it has been beautiful to create a whole new path for myself based on where my body feels called to go, based on how my how I feel called to live and act and move and breathe and dance and create. <laughs> From just and coming out of a culture, outside of a culture that actively encourages us to ignore those things completely. And so the first step within my process has been a lot of shadow work. And so this specifically has looked like inner child work and going into my subconscious, going into my memories, going into my past and stepping in for my inner child in the ways that she needed in the, in those specific moments for example holding her defending her encouraging her reminding her that her wants her needs her passions her voice matter that they are important and that i will honor them and that i will that i value them and so we we can find so many of our purest desires within our inner child because that is when we are new to this world and we have all of these desires we have all these aspirations and then we are then taught to repress them to hide them to push them away and so when we go into that space and heal through those wounds heal through that trauma and find our our desires our wants our needs then we can like later begin to act on them so the next step with that is desire discernment. And so this is something I have talked about. Oh my goodness. I talked about in the last video that I posted and so I'll just only be like briefly kind of going over it here. But the second step in my process is desire discernment. This is a practice of listening to our pulls, wants and callings and finding the core of our desires. Our desires are often, our, our desires are either driven by two different forces, <laughs> either love or fear. And so the example that I gave in the last video is makeup, for example. So. I either can say I want to wear makeup because it makes me feel extra cool and joyous and I feel comfortable in how I look naturally but I just want to add, add an extra flair and not as like a love-based desire because it's just I'm doing it out of joy or I can say I want to wear makeup because I am too afraid of what I look like without it I don't want anyone to see me without it I don't feel comfortable in my natural self like I need to wear makeup and so that desire is not and I, <laughs> that that desire is not actually our desire to wear makeup it comes from a root of wanting to feel seen wanting to feel safe wanting to feel loved wanting to feel comfortable in our natural self and so the desire discernment is the practice of looking at, at each all of our desires and finding the core of it so that we can act on the actual core of it and not just put a bandit on it and so with that 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 desire for example is is an indication that we need to look deeper into our self-love into our into our self-worth into the ways that we value ourselves and so I say that each, all of our desires, all of our desires to come to tell us something. They all hold messages and where we are meant to be led. And so even that desire, for example, tells us the where we need to pay more attention to, where we need to put more energy into, where we need to be honoring ourselves more. But then, but within the practice of desire discernment, as we like cull away those weeds, we're able to find the core of our desires and we're able to get better upon that practice of like seeing the core of our desires and acting upon that place rather than just getting stuck in the external manifestation of it, like as the desire to wear makeup. And so in the last video as well, I mentioned that the etymology of the word desire means of God, of the Father, of the universe, of source, of whatever, and meaning that all of our desires come to us uniquely and they're meant for us. They're meant for us to be led by, they're meant for us to be guided by, and we've just been taught, we've been conditioned to ignore our desires and to, and to believe that they aren't meant to be trusted, that they aren't meant to be anything important. They're just like these frivolous things that just come up to disturb us when really they are, are, they are meant to be our guiding forces. Yes. <laughs> the next step, the next pillar that I wrote is cultivating our inner world. And so I just kind of briefly touched on this because all of these, all these points really go hand in hand. They are all intertwined. And so as we start working with desire discernment, we begin to cultivate. Okay. 
<laughs> as, we get, as we begin working with desire discernment, we begin to cultivate our inner world in such a beautiful way, finding the roots of our desires so that we may unearth and uproot the weeds and make room for new flowers. And so not getting caught up in the weeds of the manifestations, for example, and like really being able to act directly at the source, act directly at the core and move from that space instead. This, this practice of desire discernment and cultivating our, cultivating our inner world and being intentional in the ways that we are healing through the weeds it cultivates this space for us, for our inner world to flourish and grow. It allows our desires to grow and flourish and thrive under our love and attention. Within this practice, you grow within your intuition as well, being able to discern between your callings with better clarity. Your inner world is, your guiding, your inner world is meant to be your guiding intuitive force. And so as we just like hold space for ourselves, hold space for our desires and like actually for the first time say, wait a second, like I can have passions. Wait a second, I can have desires. Wait a second, I can have these things and listen to them. Wait a second, I can act upon these things. That grows your, in your inner world. That helps cultivate your inner world. And that also grows your intuition as you are able to like just better be aware of your desires and how, where you feel, where you feel called to go. <laughs> And so the last last step for the last pillar is just following these desires and really, yeah, holding space for them and allowing them to guide and lead you. Being intentional in, the, in pouring more energy into your desires, pouring more energy into yourself, pouring more energy into your passions. This reminds your inner child that they are worthy of time, energy, and attention. That, like I mentioned, their voice matters and that your desires matter. Trusting your passions to guide you along your path, listening to your intuition, listening to the flowers, connecting to your guides and angels, and, and watching as your life begins to change. Like really, when you start making time and space for yourself, your whole life and perspective changes completely because you are allowing yourself to trust your body and you're allowing yourself to trust your desires. And these desires are meant for you. They are unique to you. They are meant for you to act upon. Like. There are things that you are meant to bring into this world that only you can bring into this world because you have such a unique perspective, you have such a unique amalgamation of experiences that mean that you have perspective that is so unique to you and, you, and only you can bring certain things into the world. And so when you start listening to these desires, when you start listening to these calls, when you start these calls, when you start listening to these pulls, you are led to incredible places. You are led to your passion, you are led to your power, you are led to your potential, you are led to your highest path. And that is beautiful and that is needed in this world. We need to be listening to our desires, we need to be listening to our passions because that is that that pulls us into our power in the ways that we're meant to in the ways that we're repet the ways that we are taught like we're not supposed to do because like if we're all in our power then the people up in power like they have, like they they know. They know. <laughs> so yeah, like even if it's just an intentional five minutes right when you wake up of journaling or doing something that you love, that feeds your inner world, that feeds your inner child, that feeds your spirit in the ways that you need to thrive. Like that is important. It tells your body that you are important and that, that's, it's, it's just so beyond powerful, honestly. <laughs> hold, your, your, hold your discipline close and take the leap of faith into your joy because as you start, as you start getting that, as you start exploring deeper into your joy, opportunities will present themselves to you, new doors will present themselves to you, miracles will appear in your life. And so it is important that you hold your discipline close and take the leap of faith when you feel called, when it is time for you to do so. And when you jump, the universe jumps with you, <laughs> truly. Like when you say, hey universe, I think I wanna do this thing. I think that I'm going to like listen to my body. I think I wanna come back into my power. The universe is like, what, really? Okay, like let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and then everything in your whole reality shifts and changes and yeah, I mean, that's how I have been led to this, the life that I'm in right now, to this path that I'm on outside, completely outside of the Western traditional path that I am meant to be on. And now I can hold space for my fullness in ways that I was taught was bad. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. I hope you can pull something beautiful from this video. And I hope you can listen deeper into your joy, into your passions, into your power, because you are beyond powerful. Okay. <laughs>